Hello, <laughs> Hello, everybody. John Daniel here, live at Messina Town Hall in downtown Messina. Tonight, we are streaming live the Messina Memorial Hospital public hearing. It starts at 5 p.m. We're at 4.28 p.m. now. We're going to keep the uh, film footage going as people come in and arrive for this live hearing here on John's Wacky World today. We're going to be posting this to Facebook and other places. Uh, the quality is not going to be good because this is an uh, older laptop I'm using. I don't have the uh, equipment, the good equipment, uh, expensive to do uh, live streams and pipe definition but we're filming with other cameras and it will be on the john's wacky world news channel after this live hearing so we're going to keep this going on the laptop hopefully there won't be any problems so it's february 21st 2019 at messina town hall i'll be heading up Get the link here. Let's see here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a test. I'm putting this on a Facebook, folks, so you see my mug here. It means I'm uh, working on the laptop. Let's see here. Now I got to go to Facebook. And I'll be setting up for this meeting. I'm at the town hall. I got people wrote me here. When I'm on here. Okay. So we're live here. John, do you want to get on my Wi-Fi? Here. Yeah. It is? Okay. Yeah, I'm, all right. I'm, well, just setting, need, I'm just setting it all up. If you need the pass, I'll write down the info, and if you need to yeah. log in, just log on. Yeah. yeah. They, they had it, so... Oh, cool. I think we're okay for now. Okay, I'm putting this on Facebook Live. Oh, boy. And I'm setting this up and we're Okay, there we go. That's good. Local TV station. WNTS. I got my bill signed. I appreciate that. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. 
There we go. Man, set up here. Yeah, that should be it. That's a good angle there, okay. They're flickering for some reason here. Definition camera. Thank <laughs> you. 
I seem to can't remember where I put my <laughs> public meeting starts at 5 p.m. in 10 minutes here in Messina. So it starts in 10 minutes. I know that. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> 
work here and I'd be calling you and they hung up on me. <laughs> yeah. Is it, um, what was that number? Let's see. The one you call it is disconnected. Imagine that. Well, I got a text last night. Who is this? Uh, who is this? Can you just call me? Oh, yes, you can. I do. So far, so good. This is all live right now. Uh oh, oh my God. Yeah. can they hear us? Thank you. 
You say this just for me? Just for you. Just for you. I couldn't find a part of it. Oh, thank you. I was just there. Oh, boy. Hello, YouTube. Just put my same thing under my breath. Yes. Thank you for yeah, I'm about to have a head down. <laughs> How are you? I know. I'm not a person that ever told anything. I'm going to wish you would. Consider the family. Is that part of the family? Yes. I got on both sides. I'm just kind of over it. Oh, yeah. The daggers are quiet either. I'm very comfortable. Section 127-3 of the General Municipal Law allows this assembly an opportunity to be heard, no debating or answering questions. If you want to go into executive session at any point, more than uh, three to ask for that, we will accommodate you. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Carol Fenton, resident of the town of Messina, Messina and current chairperson of the Messina Memorial Hospital Board of Managers. I am here in response to the town supervisor's letter of February 13, 2019, outlining his intention to remove me from my position on the Board of Managers. The reason for my removal, and I quote, is the failure to improve the financial condition of Messina Memorial and the failure to install a management team capable of leading Messina Memorial without exposing the taxpayers of the town of Messina <coughs> to inordinate financial risk. Specifically, you have failed to exercise adequate control of the general superintendent and management of Messina Memorial and of all matters relating to the government, discipline, contracts, and fiscal concerns thereof. 
Further, you have failed to maintain an effective inspection of said hospital and keep yourself informed of the affairs and management thereof." End quote. In terms of the timeline and to give context to my response, I was appointed to the Board of Managers in February of 2017 and have been an active member since that time, participating on numerous hospital committees. I was nominated and elected as chairperson at a 5 p.m. meeting of the Board of Managers on Tuesday, February 5th, following the removal of Susan Beller on January 23rd, 2019. Sue Beller was nominated as chairperson December 17th, following your refusal to reappoint then Chairman Scott Wilson after his term on the board expired on December 31st, 2018. Sue Beller took over the first of the year. In the last two months, you have appointed six new members to the board. My response to the charges are as follows. As to the charge of failing to improve the financial condition of the hospital, I would submit that doing so in eight days would be a tall order for most individuals. To claim that I haven't done so in eight days is both unfair and unrealistic. As you are aware, there are numerous reasons our hospital is facing financial constraints. Many small community hospitals are facing the same. That is the reason we are working towards an affiliation with a larger hospital network. As to the charge of failure to install a management team capable of leading Messina Memorial without exposing the taxpayers of the town of Messina to inordinate financial risk. On June 19, 2018, an article in the Watertown Daily Times noted the surprise resignation of Messina Memorial Hospital CEO. I will not go into the details of the how or why of Mr. Willingham's <laughs> resignation. The article, however, goes on to say that Ann Gilpin was hired as interim chief executive officer, noting that Mr. O'Shaughnessy stated that it will be a temporary position. Quote, we talked to her. She has excellent credentials and comes highly rated. She was going to be perfect for that two month period we <laughs> her, O'Shaughnessy said. New York General Municipal Law Section 128 states the Board of Managers shall appoint a superintendent of the hospital who shall not be a member of the Board of Managers and who shall hold office at the pleasure of said board. However, Ann Gilpin was hired by the Town of Messina with no input or knowledge of the Board of Managers. The Board was forced to appoint Ann Gilpin as following Mr. Willenben's resignation MMH was without a CEO and could not operate without one. Ann Gilpin was a very capable CEO during her short tenure. She assisted the board of managers in locating Chuck Giganto, who is currently serving as interim president, president and chief executive officer since August of 2018. He has been a tremendous asset to this hospital. The rest of the Messina Memorial Hospital management team has been there for many years and are some of the brightest, most dedicated individuals I have ever worked with. To infer otherwise is insulting to them. As to the charge that I have failed to exercise adequate control of the general superintendents and management of Messina Memorial and of all matters relating to the government discipline contracts and fiscal concerns thereof, and that I have failed to maintain an effective inspection of that hospital and keep myself informed of the affairs and management thereof. During my eight days as chair and on a daily basis, I met with, emailed, and spoke on the phone with not only the CEO, but other hospital management staff and board members as well. Did I schedule or conduct any inspections of the hospital in those eight days? No, I did not. Did I keep myself informed of the affairs and management of the hospital to the extent that I could in eight days? Absolutely. If you have information to the contrary, please let me know. Excuse me. In late December of 2018, 
You called me at home and informed me you were calling various board members and asking for their resignation if they could not, quote, support you. I was stunned and disappointed to receive a call of this nature. I have stated many times that the town supervisor has the statutory right to remove board members. He threatened to do so at the June 2018 Board of Managers meeting following the resignation of Bob Wellenbeck. Several board members expressed concern and anger at this threat, and those were communicated to you by then Chair Scott Wilson. This resulted in a letter dated July 23rd, 2018 from you as town supervisor to Mr. Wilson that was ultimately shared with the rest of the board of manager members. The letter said, quote, I have been asked to send this correspondence on behalf of the town board of the town of Messina. It is the town board's intention to allow the Messina Memorial Hospital board to manage the operations of the Messina Memorial Hospital as required by general municipal law of the state of New York. I want to again express my appreciation and that of the entire town of Messina board for the work you and the MMH board do for the town of Messina, end quote. Obviously a lot has changed between July and today. An article in Monday's Watertown Times states Mr. O'Shaughnessy said he is reviewing the performance of every board member. At this point, I've just been reviewing it on a case-by-case -case basis. Mainly, we are just looking at each one to see if they need to be removed, Mr. O'Shaughnessy said. My first rhetorical question to you is, who is the we that you refer to? You have said many times you have the sole statutory authority to remove board members. It is curious that you and some other unnamed person is reviewing the performance of every board member. My second rhetorical question would be, what are the performance standards you are using in your performance review? The standards I've used while on the board were the hospital town bylaws outlining the duties and responsibilities of board members which reflects what is in the New York State General Municipal Law. Neither of these documents contain anything that says you have to follow the wishes of the town supervisor. <laughs> it is apparent that any board member that does not agree with you needs to be removed. This is not how public boards are intended to operate. <laughs> You have publicly and privately stated that you have no idea why the board passed a resolution to pursue affiliation with Krauss, Claxton, Hepburn. The Messina Memorial Physicians had expressed a similar sentiment and suggested a meeting with all parties so presentations could be made, questions asked and answered. At a town council meeting held here January 16th, several hospital employees and members of the public express similar sentiments. In order to be responsive to what was in my mind a valid request, I reached out to both potential affiliates and emailed you that I had done so and that I would be coordinating, coordinating dates, hopefully in early March. I truly believe this is what you and the town council desired. Unfortunately, I was mistaken as later that day, I received your email termination letter. To the rest of the town council members, although the town supervisor has the right to appoint and remove board members, you have a vote in everything else, including the asset transfer agreement. I challenge you to make a motion tonight to press for more information as I was trying to do. So you can make a reasoned, informed decision on the asset transfer agreement. You have a vote, use it. In conclusion, Mr. O'Shaughnessy, you publicly admitted in the media that you were packing the board. I found that to be an interesting use of terminology. So I Googled the definition and found on dictionary.com when used as a verb as it was in this case, it means 
to fill a legislative body committee with one's own supporters. It is very apparent that that is your ultimate intention. Thank you for the opportunity to respond to my pro proposed removal. I hope you will reconsider and allow me to remain as chair of the Messina Memorial Board of Managers. <clears throat> I understand I have the right to have witnesses on my speak on you my do. behalf. Yes. Okay, I have three. <coughs> um, Joe Gray, Susan Beller, and Charlie Romine. <coughs> Um, again, Sue Ballard is supported MMH volunteer Carol Fenton. Carol has faithfully worked as a board of manager, attending and actively participating in several committees, adhering to the bylaws with all corresponding responsibilities and leadership and management, which was her job description when appointed by Supervisor Joe Gray. While Carol dedicated hundreds of hours to work voluntarily for the benefit of MMH, it is also important to say that another now former board of manager, Dave McLennan, was earnest and sincere in his dedication and commitment to thousands of hours over his 17 years in his efforts to keep MMH a viable, full-service hospital. When the current supervisor, Steve O'Shaughnessy, served as liaison, he only attended three board meetings in all of 2016, and only two meetings in all of 2017. Yet that was part of your job in London, as, and say and paid for by the town taxpayers. Only when you became supervisor, you did attend 11 of the 12 board meetings in 2018. In your blatant disregard for board of managers who dare exercise free speech or vote for an affiliation not to your choice, you removed hardworking volunteers, Carol, Dave, and myself, who obviously have more commitment to keeping MMH a full service hospital. As a result, you have also destroyed a planned process of board of managers' yearly rotations and now have added members, some who have shown a bias or a disgruntled behavior toward MMH, but who will support you and your choice of affiliation that will condense our community hospital. By the way, it is pretty obvious to many in our community that Dr. Moresta has a potential conflict of interest serving on our board when he himself is chief medical officer of St. Lawrence Health in Oxen Hospital. So, you, Steve, have taken ownership of removing <coughs> valuable board members, and for the record, through your actions, you alone have taken full ownership and full responsibility of the future of MMH, which means if MMH is not maintained as a full service hospital, it may result the loss of services and jobs. Thank you. Yeah. 
As stated earlier, I appointed uh, Carol Fenton to the Hospital Board of Managers uh, in 2017. Um, she is has a tremendous record as a professional, a professional woman who has uh, held uh, uh, positions of esteem in our community. Is, is, is retired from the St. Lawrence Seaway Development Corporation. Um, and uh, obviously has a lot of professional experience to bring to the board. One of the things I said to her was, and what I said to everyone that I appointed to the board, I appointed to the board was, I don't want you to be a yes person. I want you to speak your mind, do your research, and um, weigh in. Don't just sit there and nod your head. And the people that I've appointed, I don't think any of them have done that. And I'm very proud of that and very pleased with that. Your dismissal of Carol Fenton was unfounded and capricious. In total, you have dismissed three members of the MMH board, refused to appoint a fourth, and the disruption and chaos created by you and Councilman Carbone caused the fifth member to resign. Additionally, the financial crisis and fiscal emergency you and Carbone manufactured has truly destabilized our hospital. And all this doom and gloom and how we're going to collapse, and oh my God, we're out of money, and oh, they can't make payroll, and just foolishness. This caused unnecessary strife and stress for MMH employees and has upset our community. You claim Mrs. Fenton's quote, removal was prompted by a failure to improve financial conditions of MMH and failure to install a management team capable of leading MMH. But you, sir, are the one responsible for terminating Mr. Walden, or whatever the proper term is. I call it terminating. He, he probably doesn't like that term. He resigned. But. Now, bringing in a replacement at nearly twice his salary, and then firing the attorney who helped you orchestrate all of this foolishness. If your reasons are truthfully stated and you really believe them, then you should not have appointed, reappointed Mrs. Perez to the hospital board of managers, and you should immediately dismiss the remainder of the board who have been in office for more than two months. Obviously, they're all at fault, too. Why does it all fall on the two people you've done? Melanie Cunningham should have never been appointed on to the uh, Mississippi Town Council. She was on the hospital board. She apparently failed to take care of the problems as well. So she certainly shouldn't be on the town board, but you guys appointed her to that position. In fact, all the town council should resign because they all failed to address the problem at the hospital. If things were that bad, why don't you all stop that? Lastly, you were a town council liaison to the hospital board for two years prior to becoming supervisor and did nothing to quote unquote improve financial conditions of MMH. Then, as town supervisor for more than a year, you still did not improve financial conditions of MMH. It would seem the only right and just action for you to take is to resign the supervisor and let the board of hospital board of managers perform its duties to establish policies to allow MMH to carry out its mission to provide quality health care in the Seaway Valley. Before you resign, however, please reappoint Mrs. Mrs. Fenton so she can get back to work. Thank you. Carol Fenton, Dave McLennan, Sue Ballard, Scott Wilson, or Dina Buckley. 
They are heroines and heroes of our community. They have a We have been failed by an autocratic town supervisor and four town council people who have not been our voice in a check and balance system in our community. What check and balance? It's disgraceful the way you gentlemen, that lady, have conducted yourself to represent yeah. us. Now, either you have no opinion, as a as town council people, which I read in the paper, or you refuse or forget to return media calls. So it's kind of saying one doesn't go both ways. Now, this meeting is a farce. No person should be allowed to be judge and jury. That's a system that should be changed. Supervisor, I am charged by statute with appointing and removing members of the Messina Memorial Hospital Board of Management. Although I've consulted with the town board in the past, the statute that allows the creation of a town owned hospital gives the supervisor the authority to appoint and remove hospital board members. <coughs> I wanted to state some of the facts that drew my decisions that we talked about tonight. The Cena Memorial Hospital has incurred multi-million dollar losses from operations over the last seven years, several years. 4.8 million loss in 2014, $7 million loss in 2015, $6.5 million loss in 2016, over $7 million projected for 2017 and over $5 million projected for 2018. The Cena Memorial Hospital is a public body and it must make contributions to New York State retirement system. The Cena Memorial has not been able to make the pension contributions required for 2018 and 2019. 
$5 million is due. If it's not paid by the hospital, all of the taxpayers in the family scene will be shoulder to this burden. In 2015, December, the Messina Memorial Hospital Board was authorized by a resolution from the town board to begin the process of converting to a not for profit, profit hospital subject to certain requirements, including the creation of a successor pension plan with a negotiated bridge payment for the most affected employees. Satisfying the town that the town has been adequate, adequately compensated for its assets and relieved of all of its debts from the hospital and maintaining an overall employment at the new not for profit hospital at 345 FTE and to grow its employment. To this date, the Board of Managers has not produced any such plan, affiliation, contract, or other document that would satisfy this fee criteria. The Board of Managers voted on December 19th to affiliate with Krauss Kleist. This vote was not based on any co contract or concrete proposal. The vote wasn't on the agenda for the December 19th meeting, so the employees of the hospital and public could not hear of the decision. The vote was taken after the Board of Managers executive session when the press and the town board liaisons were not present. The Board of Managers did not include the town board in this decision-making process, nor notify the town board that the vote was going to take place. The Board of Managers has expressed to the town board that they were relying on a grant from the state of New York to ease the transfer costs and the burden of the hospital debt on the town tax. <coughs> Since then, the Board of Managers was informed that the MS Messina Memorial Hospital is not getting the grant. As the town supervisor, I recognize the importance of of Messina Memorial Hospital to this community and appreciate the work and the effort of the employees and the medical staff. I also appreciate the dedication of the board of managers, even if I disagree with it. I've wanted to work with the board of managers to come to a solution that would be best interest of the Messina Hospital and the taxpayers of the town. Despite these losses, despite the inability to make the pension payments, and despite the lack of a plan that satisfied the criteria that set forth by the town board, despite the vote done without consultation with the town board, in an attempt to work with the board of managers, I called three special meetings, joint meetings, for January 31st, February 6th, <coughs> February 13th and invited the board of managers so that path forward could be discussed. However, a quorum of the board of managers did not attend any of the three meetings, including Mrs. Benton and Mr. McClellan, and committed to the future of Messina Memorial Hospital and will commit to some more support the board of manager members who are willing and able to work with the town board to keep the hospital open, viable, so with that, does anybody have anything to say? Young guys, if we're would you please stand in front of the <laughs> I'm not really a salt and cut it my fault. I'm going to tell you about a dumpster fire. What constitutes a dumpster fire? It depends really on who's watching. But to paraphrase the late Supreme Court Justice Potter Stewart, you know it and you see it. Webster, as it turns out, back in 2018, actually added a bigger picture. And they defined it as such an utterly calamitous or mismanaged situation or occurrence. A disaster. What the Messina Down Board has done, indeed continues to do now, regarding the future of the Messina Memorial Hospital, is simply put a dumpster fire. Early this month, a respected reporter of the community approached the four of you councilpersons looking for your input, your thoughts, and your opinions 
Your division health supervisor has handled the situation of MMH. Your answers, or more specifically, lack thereof, bring shame upon the community, the situation, and yourselves. Mr. Miller, your statement that you didn't have a right to come to comment is a conduct. You're a, you're a member of this community, sir. You're an elected official, and you owe it to the people who elected you, including your brother firefighters, to tell the people your opinion. It's the reason, after all, you were elected, Bob, because we, the people of this community, trust you to speak for us. You are not speaking for us, Tom. Mr. Nicola, you've taught generations of students history at the Cena Center, and you've served this community for many, many years, and for that, I thank you. I think thank you people in the room as well. The people who made you a council, myself included, did so because they believed they were electing a representative to the board that would make informed decisions, would provide the leadership the town of the Cena needs, the sort of leadership that you yourself instill in many of those students that you taught at the Cena Center. You are not leading us out. Ms. Cunningham, you served the Messina Hospital Board prior to being named to the town board of Messina. If anyone on the town board who knows what unique problems are facing that hospital, I'd like to think that it's you. However, I'll remind you that your responsibility to the community as a member of the town board means that if a reporter reaches out to you for a comment on what is quite simply probably the single most important issue that has faced the board as a whole during your time on it, you have a responsibility to reach out. If he can't reach you when he calls for a comment, can the constituency expect the same sort of service? You are not answering us, Melody. Mr. Carbone, you are a son of Messina, as I am, born and raised, as are many of us here this evening. Your father served this town with pride as a municipal employee for many, many years. And you've had successes yourself here and working with one of the larger employers in the community at night. Yet, like Ms. Cunningham, you couldn't even be bothered giving a comment which you were asked for. Instead, we're treated with outbursts, angry slapping of desks, and then giving a half-hearted apology, claiming a lack of sleep. You are not making us proud, son. In fact, I would go so far as to suggest a very simple answer. Your lack of sleep. Resign your position on the board. I'm sure that we have much more time than I come to you and your many, many factors as members of the hospital board. And I'd like to pause for a moment with Carol and Sarah <coughs> and Dave and Scott and Tina for their service. <laughs> Of that hospital board because how they were treated was reprehensible. There is simply no other word for it. If the situation before us is a dumpster fire, you are the propane force that lit this off. Going at least as far back as December of last year with your refusal to reappoint Scott Wilson, a finance guy from way back. By your own admission, you're packing the board. This is from the February 14th broadcast on WWM Live. I am packing the board. I want people that will be responsible, will take action, will make this hospital work to make the hospital sustainable. We the people of this community, not the you people that you derisively referred to in this forum just a month ago, but the people that elected you, town supervisor, believing you were a man who would ensure the will of the people and counted under fair and partial leadership, we are sick and we are tired of treatment over members of the hospital board. Instead, it seems that you're working towards your own ends, serving your own interests above that of the hospital board, the town board, or the people of the town. What do you hide and see? You are the closest that the scene has got to a Faustian villain. Who are you answering to, if not these people in this room and beyond? Your actions speak loud and whatever words you might want to give us on the issue. You can read us line after line, it doesn't matter. What you are doing speaks volumes. The town of Messina is sick of watching and smelling this dumpster fire. In a statement made in January, you stated, quote, it's important that both the town board and the board of managers listen to the medical staff in Messina. That should encourage the board of managers to come and work with the town of Messina to come up with an evaluation <coughs> and figure out which way we should go. <coughs> January 11th, Watertown did retires. Yet, Dr. Tang stood here last month where I'm standing, reminding you that partnering with CPH and SLHS 
would be a mistake. And clearly, you're not you're only interested in listening to medical staff that, that share your opinion and your view on the subject. That's an impossible board that. Apparently, somebody's got some kind of control or control over you. Perhaps there's a vested interest, a conflict maybe, amongst you and somebody that would make you want to go in a direction that seems to defy logic and reason. Joe Gray served as town supervisor for eight years and has been involved in the world of politics much longer than I have. I don't like this. He doesn't need my defense of his position or actions. But as a Navy vet, as a member of this community, the state of the country, I'll stand with Joe and defend the right that he has to say stuff. So when he, when I see comments on WWNY TV just two days ago, his posts and what he's putting out on social media is bad for the community. I don't think it's doing anything to help the problem. This is your own quote, your own quote, your own words. I got news, Steve. Read the papers. The problem is your own. This is your own creation. You've started this dumpster fire. Every day, every week, every person that's summarily kicked off the board, you show the electorate of Messina your contempt for them and your disqualification from the position you hold. In short, this community has no confidence in either you, Mr. O'Shaughnessy, you, Councilwoman Cunningham, or the three of you, Councilwoman. Do the right thing. Step aside. Go, oh, Amy. Go, oh, Amy. I'm Amy Batten. Okay, to talk about the secret vote that the hospital board had wanting choosing to affiliate with Crowdfunding. Where and when did the secret vote obviously happen to go with EPH? My next question It's in the rumor mill that Chuck is next. Do you appoint the next CEO, or does our hospital board that you start, meaning pretty much the same person? So, why do we even have a hospital board if we just want to call the shot? And when did that vote happen, other than the election where even I was uh, voted for you? I wish back then you had said to me, I don't want that position, but vote for me anyway because I got your back. Now we're supposed to trust you. When you said you did not want that position, you were thrown into it. Just explain to us, please, if your choice is 58, and you alone for the judge and jury of that decision too, how that is us. Make us swallow that pill. It's not good for us. We know that. You obviously see a difference. I'm not on the board. we we'll never sit on that board. Because I don't expect we don't think the thing. But if you know something we don't know, please lay it. You said half the job will be gone. Sam, you said that. Mm -hmm. You said it's a takeover. Yeah. How is that okay? Mm -hmm. You're making a decision. It's my what? And maybe we'll just sit down and shut up. And until then, <coughs> this is our house. This is our house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah.
<laughs> Who do we want as our board of managers? Carol. Carol. Let's go to the reasoning that you use to fire these fine people. Who is the chief fiscal officer of this town? You've been in office in that chair since when? A year. A year. Well, we're going to go to months. This is not that we're Prior to that, where did you sit? Over there. Over there, you weren't on the town council at no. all? Yeah. Okay. So, using, using you as chief financial officer for his ultimate fiscal responsibility for the hospital the town owns, and that you're calling in their past history going back to 2015, I'll call in your past history. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're the chief fiscal officer. You have failed to fix the financial situation of the hospital. You have failed to install a management team. Appropriate. They had three days, five days, eight days, ten call it, no days. And any authority to make that happen? You are double standard. You need to step down using your own rules and criteria. The problem with this board is it is a board of one. It is not a town board. It is a board of one. Me, myself, I. Single voice. Single voice. Single voice. That's where it's going to go. And you're going to hear that a lot from me in the future. You all have a responsibility in the town code to share equal power. <coughs> it is one of five that gets equal power. That's what your book says. You guys, in your book, the next paragraph says that same thing. You are one of five of equal power. You need to speak up because there's another paragraph in there that says your greatest responsibility to this community is to represent us with your vote. <laughs> Telling us that you have no voice, to is remaining silent, the silent majority, a bunch of bobbleheads as he does what he does, is not carrying out your responsibilities according to the book that you are abided by the policy. Here, here. Okay. Now, you ask for plan B. I want to give you a plan B. This hospital became a community hospital because this community wanted a hospital and they were willing to accept the risk. So they knew what they were getting into. They knew that if the hospital went into financial problems, that they were on the hook because of that. It never happened. We came 40 years after the hospital was founded. This hospital went through a crisis, financial crisis. They were going to close it down. What did the community members of this community do? They rallied together. With the municipal board. municipal bonded. With the and hospital. guess what? That municipal bond bailed out the hospital. Who paid that bond back? The, the hospital uh -huh. operations paid it back. Yes. Yep. Not a dime of risk. Yes, the risk was still there, but they accepted it. You know what? We have another risk. We can do a municipal bond again. We can make that part of the asset transfer agreement. Okay? You don't get to decide whether that risk is acceptable or not. You need to put that out to this community and let us decide whether that risk is acceptable to us and whether we wish to proceed and save our hospital. <laughs> We started with 16 doctors on staff. Today we have nearly 50. One of your recent board members that you appointed, which I respect as a doctor, Dr. Moresca, I respect him tremendously. He's done a lot for our community. But you talk about removing board members who worked so many hours, and it was because of physical responsibility. For me to get a doctor into our facility, it takes hours, thousands of hours. In fact, Dr. Gaborio, it took us three years to stop making him. In the last two weeks, I've had at least two have come to me and more have been 
approached by Dr. Moresco, who's on our board now, and asking them to come just work straight for Kim Foxian. How is that helping a financial security? Yeah. 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 No, no, that's where it's going to Wow. Oh my God. You can't say that. I work at a daily job. I work at a job. It's not a job. It's not a job. When they come themselves and speak to them. Oh my God. You can't go by rumors. Give us facts. And you know how hard it is to bring any professionals recruit them to this community. I've talked to many of you on this. It's not a rumor that she heard I have a physician in the my doctors come in this year, and I want them to still come. In fact, I have to get home by 6 30 to talk to that orthopedic that's supposed to start this summer. Please. Support our board members and please reconsider keeping some of them back on our board. They have worked very, very hard to get us where we are. And I know there are financial <coughs> issues and we are dealing with them, but I ask you to reconsider them. You, Mr. Obrasi, if you could reach out to Kraus and any other affiliate, possible affiliates to get their plan on what they would do with our hospital, have you done that? Yep. Oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> you got rid of her. No, no, no. Let her speak. I ask you to reach out to them because you are the town supervisor. You are the board and have to sign the asset transfer in order for us to affiliate. If you do not make an effort in this process, how do we as employees of the hospital have any faith in what you're doing when you won't take the step forward? Do the bank come to you and offer you a mortgage? No. So no. let me get to this. No, no, no. answer no. No. Yes no. Yes no. You, don't, you don't want me to be involved with the board of managers and how you do? Or? No, 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 no. I want you to step up and make it your job to make the best interest, the best decision with the community, the hospital, and everybody involved. So should we include the board of managers? Yes, it needs to be and pulled. did we not, do you remember when I read that there were three meetings that we tried to set up with the board of managers? And, and how much notice did they have for those meetings? They had a week. Okay. And it's during, during holidays. 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 Holidays, during holidays. I cannot have yeah. a in a week. I understand most of you, your children are grown. You don't have sports. You don't have things like that. But just because the board of managers may not have younger children in sports and stuff like that, does not mean they're available at a moment's notice. There's a respect on both sides. It needs to be, we need to communicate. So, what? I mean, how, how much time do I get by? As much as it takes. A joint, a joint endeavor. Give them, give them a month. Okay. I'm, okay. I no, you should no, exactly. But my thing is, we want the hospital to succeed, and what we see from you is the only thing you're looking at is the financial picture. Trust me, I get that. I will not be able to afford the tax hike if the taxpayers incur anything that is not covered by the affiliate hospital. My other question is, do you or any of the board members understand the difference between an affiliation in which Kraus is offering and the takeover is from what I understand CPH has offered. Well, and I, I hope everybody can say this without going far or something sarcastic. But to this point, neither one has offered anything okay. that I'm aware of. <clears throat> okay, so either way, neither one has offered any money 
So any of the whatever million, billion, whatever that the town owes the hospital, they have not offered a penny. No, it's not the town that owes the hospital. The hospital, the hospital, the hospital owes the town. town. The hospital owes the defendants. It oh. owes the town for the pension. Right. But it owes all the defendants. The hospital debt. Right. So if they have not offered anything, why are we looking at them? Looking at who? Well, the only two that I've heard. Well, and the other thing too is like, you know, I just would like everybody to know that it was Krauss that called me, and then I went down in July and visited with them, and then put them in touch with them together. In Potsdam, called me and I went to visit with them and put them in touch with them. So it's not like they were even part of the original RMP that went out by the Board of Managers. Okay. It was something that, that I did because I received their phone call and asked the Board of Managers to follow up with an affiliation. To this day, we've got no proposal other than we'd like to talk about it, and we have a good cultural fit, but there's been no concrete proposal. We are losing money, which may not seem important, and I don't mean to be sarcastic to anybody here, but there is a finite end to what the debt load of the hospital can take on. Right, we understand that. But and, we're also looking at and it's there's a sense of urgency that I try to express to the board of managers, and to this day we have not been able to get that to sound board. And even though I would, I'm the one that expressed this urgency and talked to the board of managers, it hasn't worked. I mean, you know, you talk about money. Um, how long can we sustain this? Four point eight million dollars in two thousand fourteen, seven million in two thousand fifteen, six point five million in sixteen, seven over seven million in for seventeen, and over five million in eighteen. Is there a date or time set up for any possible affiliates to? Make a presentation of what their plan would be called off Yeah, we had a point of same question. And how long to get that lined up? March, March. 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 I sent you an email that I wanted to come to your special meeting to discuss the affiliation to set up a date in early March for the presentations from both Krauss and Canton Potsky. That was the, I, I put an agenda together and I sent it to each one of you board members to say that I refuse or other board members refuse. We were trying to get the answers that you say you want. So don't sit there and, and let the public think that I have not been responsive to your summons to special meetings when it is the responsibility of the board chair to call an official meeting of the hospital board members. You used to do that with Scott Wilson. You used to pick up the phone and call Scott Wilson and say, hey, I want to have a joint meeting. Yep, I'll, I'll call my board member. You've never once except in late December when you threatened or asked me to resign, you never once called me and asked me for a special meeting. So that's not, that's not the case, people. I wanted to get these presentations together for the board, for the physicians, so that we could all make, so don't sit there and say that, gee, I don't know. I don't have that information. You don't want it because you've already decided. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
it would be all right if they were able to make a presentation or a proposal. And they've been, have both of them been in and done an evaluation? Well, yes. Yes. Krause has been in to do an evaluation, and you have, have know that St. Lawrence Health has done a deep dive into our financials. You were part of the email train that asked these financials to be sent to St. Lawrence Health to Dr. Acker. Yeah. Uh, sounds yeah. like you're not good enough. Yeah. 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 But that is not true. While we did ask for those financials to be sent to David Acker, the previous CEO did, would not send them. Oh, that's, that's not true. true. That's they were put well, on. That's not true. That's, that's, that's not everything true. Everything was sent. That, yeah. I think that it was put on a Google Drive, Thank sent you. to yeah. them, so they could look at it. And when they didn't look at it, it wasn't even an eighth of what they had asked for. Oh, so you didn't get it, or you didn't get it? And did we well, know? Well, we didn't, we didn't <laughs> get it. I'm sorry. I don't know how much we got. Yeah, how would you know unless they call you? Got away from your. Oh, so, oh, he's back pedaling. Step up and take initiative and to checking in her affiliates and asking them their plans. What are you going to do next, or are you just going to sit in your office every day? And fire people. Because I've been told you sit in your office Monday through Friday, eight thirty to four thirty. Any one of us hospital. Employees or taxpayers can walk into your office and sit down and have a face-to-face -face conversation. Mm -hmm. Are you in the office? Yes. Are you in the office? Sorry, I give you that. Mm -hmm. There's no ulterior motive. I, I just think that the hospital. Is about to go under. I barely think. We don't know. Thank you. Us as the employees and the ones working our bubble every day, other staff, because we can't get staffing because of everything that's in the paper, don't feel that pressure. We are short clerks. We are short LPNs. I guarantee we're short nurses in the hospital. And we can't so, get people to come here because all it is is bad press and nothing's being done. You have not changed one thing to alter that. Not one thing. And except firing people who are working hard in volunteer positions to yeah. try and get us to where we need to be to where we can get you to sign that as, as a, uh, transfer and then hope to God that you still, under God's graces, let us do as the Messina Hospital town. The Cena Hospital Board sees fit for our hospital to save our jobs, to save our uh, taxpayers. I mean, I'm kind of confused. Some of this is the hospital board of managers is responsible in the day to day operation. Right. So, right. They were charged in December 2015 with setting up a private medical trust and the book for my building. That's not my job. It's their job. Were you on the board then? Yes. I will be glad to sign it as soon as they fulfill all of the requirements in the December 15 resolution that. If or when that is done, whose choice is it in the affiliate hospital? Is it the town board or the hospital board? The taxpayers of the town of the city. So if they're going to be a vote. Oh, who's going to do a vote? It's us. Put it to a vote. They can. And there is a, a choice for a domestic preference right. when that happens. They, there are people that are unhappy with whatever decision we make, mm -hmm. and we are allowed to get a certain number of signatures and that call for the preference. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Charlie, I was going to first. Go ahead. Sorry, yeah. My sister in law is Carl Fenton, and she's a great woman. I want you to know I just looked back here a year and a half ago to the political capital of New York State. All the time, 30 years. I've never seen anything like I've seen as I look back. I go about a few things, but I think the people in your audience needs to know this. You are aware that it'd be very hard to get your auto office before the next election. But it is possible. You have to contact the Attorney General of New York State and get a form and ask for hearings 
be able to remove this gross out of thing. people that are outside of our community than you do our CFO who has a lives in Messina is a Messina taxpayer you seem to rely on all these other things without you know you don't listen to your own board of managers you're, you're just like that to fire but my comment is with all the stress that's gone on just contemplate this with your board and legal counsel okay stop and sit back and think okay what would happen if we would say the last month never happened. You should have it within your power to reinstate probably maybe three or four of them, maybe all of the other board of manager members that you fired. Get them all on board and then try working together with the whole damn board of, from the town and the board of managers. Without, you know, listen to your people that are in your community, the people that you fired, almost all of those. Believe it or not, are Messina taxpayers. They deserve better than they've been treated. Hi, my name is Gina Snyder. I've been sitting back listening to you for over a year now. Okay, and um, every t transparency is one thing I'd like to bring up. I've asked you on multiple times questions, and you've lied to me. That's transparency. When you repeatedly lie to me when I've been coming here for a year to get to know you better, for you to get to know me better, to help our community, and I ask you a question, you either, like, shut me off, tell me a positive comment, or you lie to me. Okay, and when I tell you you lied to me, you know, and even your, your staff knows that when you say you're audited, our financials are going to be here tomorrow, that's a lie. Okay, when you lie to me, that's transparency. I need to see the truth at all times. When you lie, red flags go up. One thing you need to know about all those numbers that you were whipping off, a loss here, you know, and a loss there. Well, I think <coughs> the last two, if we all know how to do math, if you had a $7 million loss and the next year it was a $5 million loss, is it really a loss? Or did we save $2 million from the prior year? Because I look at it like that. Something's going up a little bit better just a little better, $2 million better. 
So when you start quoting all these bottom lines and talking about a loss, a loss, economic impact, you yourself say it doesn't matter if your airport takes a loss every year. It doesn't matter because the economic impact that it brings in is greater than the loss. Have you done an economic impact study on your airport? Is there one for the hospital? Thank you. Because you've been asked again and again and again to do an economic impact for your airport. And you haven't. But yet you quote that even if it does take a loss, it's the economic impact that's going to keep it here and keep it going. Okay? You see the hospital being $500. Yeah. Well, an astronomical number. I think up here, and I've been told by your staff that my biggest problem with me coming here is I put you on the spot. <laughs> you don't know the answers to the questions you were asked that you should know the answers to. Where's my sign? Melanie, has it been too busy for you to do any work on our Messina sign? No, it has not been too busy for you. As a matter of fact, I've reached out to, to some other communities to get ideas and see what, what companies they use. I did a little research on it, but no, it is not. It is still something we are working on. So Canadians tell me left and right, gee, we drive right on through and we don't even see your Messina sign anymore. They're just going to keep on driving. Sometimes small there. little efforts, like a Messina That's sign, awesome. is good for economic impact, okay? First impressions, everything. Just, you know, try working on a little thing and stop looking at these big numbers, like scaring everybody, loss, loss, loss. Instead, seven million to five million, as far as I'm concerned. Let me answer your, your uh, comment on the uh, 2017, okay? So 2017, the house went, you probably always just kind of in and out, but uh, 2017 was reported 5.6 million dollar loss. Okay. The auditors came back with a change of the okay. 2017. 2018, there was a one time adjustment to $2.3 million. Which so auditor I, are you talking about? I don't mean to interrupt you. Your auditor yeah. or the hospital's, the hospital's auditor. auditor? That's their job to help them. That's why we yeah. call okay. auditors in. Right. Can you make so, sure my numbers are in order? Let me finish. 2018 would have been an $18 million dollar loss. Not, not if, you, if you discount that one time adjustment of the NOMAC reimbursement, it would have been $8 million dollar loss. So it goes from $7 million to $8 million, not $2 million dollar, uh, better. So. I took this off a of Facebook post. I know, I'm just telling you without the one time ready. adjustment, that's what it is. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everything that's going on in the public is really scaring our people. It scares our employees. It scares the patients. We, we've been following some things that people are wanting to go elsewhere because they don't know what's going to go on. <laughs> All because of this. But you are right. This is part of the losses now. In 2017, we actually came up with a $7 million loss because we were able to fix some of the past history that wasn't done correctly. In 2018, we did have yes. that adjustment. We also had 485 less admissions, 23% reduction. You run a business and you lose 23% of your major market piece. What do you think that's going to do? Now, all this staring at the end of the year that's been going on has really chased people away. We put together plans to be able to try and fix that. We bought clinics, we added people for the clinics, we ended up with less FTEs in 2018. 18 that we actually brought in. So we had a reduction. We had a reduction in about $20 million of reduction that we actually did. But when you lose that much volume and everything we had done, if we hadn't done that, we would have had a break even. Now, people say we haven't done anything. We've been working on fixing these problems. And we need to continue to fix these problems. I'm a taxpayer. I've lived here for four years. I want to live in Lucina and retire here. And I'm going to stay here and work the best I can with whatever affiliation you have in order to make this hospital successful. This is too important. $85 million economic impact to this community. 
if you lost half your jobs, that's 40 million a year you're going to lose in economic impact. We need to pay attention to those things. But we also need to do, like we said, we need to find, we need to find the money to be able to move to the next steps. And as far as the grants go, only two million of the two hundred million of the three hundred million were given out at the end of the year. We are told by the state that this three hundred million that's still left there will be put out to grants. Now the Department of Health will not tell us even if we're in that. But there's three hundred million by May first that has to go out to grants. If anybody has a way to talk to the governor or be able to get us answers. I would rather have the answers in the room so we know where we're going. And I will work with whatever we need to do to make this hospital successful. And I've been doing this 44 years. It's not my first rodeo. I've been doing healthcare 44 years. How many other people you know have been doing their jobs for 44 years? So I have seen a lot. I've worked with the largest healthcare corporations in the world, Hospital Corporation of America. I've put together mergers. I have not been in other places where the places have closed. I was at Adirondack Medical Center where we could decide to put two hospitals together. I was in HCA when we closed the Med Search Hospital, built the Psych Hospital. I have done a lot of different things in a lot of different places. But we need help. We need to be together. You know, we, we talk about being together, and then we get out in the public. And we put all this that scares the crap out of our people. Yeah. And we need to stop doing it. I can't agree with it anymore. Back in last February, the hospital board and the town board agreed we would not air this in the public. We would not air this in the media. And that didn't happen. No, that it didn't, didn't happen. happen. And it started with the hospital board. I don't want to point, I shouldn't even said that. I shouldn't point fingers. I shouldn't point fingers. All right. So I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you what. Last summer, actually last fall, we were told by the temporary CF, uh, CEO, we're going to run out of money. That was the summer, he said, we're going to run out of money. We got the $2.3 million. E. All right, we got the $2.3 million. We're told we're going to run out of money in March. Okay, and that scared us. We know we need to find money. All right. All we know that, that the grant was applied for in March. It didn't come in. It was supposed to be here in June. It didn't come in June. It was supposed to be here in September. It didn't come in September. It was supposed to be here in November. It didn't come in November. It was supposed to be here at the end of the year. It didn't come at the end of the year. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Let me finish. I think it's finished. Let me finish. The grant was supposed to be here. All right. It was going to be asked for ten percent of the grant, which covered the whole state. Ten percent. Of all these hospitals in the whole state, we were concerned we weren't going to get that money. We were concerned this this past fall. We asked what Plan B was. There was no Plan B. We got concerned. We started looking. We looked look for hospitals to help us out. All right. We're continuing to look. We need somebody who's got money to help us. All right. Otherwise, we're going to run out. All right. Now they finish. They finish. Who says we're going to get a three hundred million, the three hundred million dollar grant? We're going to get some more money. Who says that? We'll we say don't know because we'll the Department, the Department of Health will not tell us. The New York State, State the New finished. York State has said that that grant money. Hospital Association. How long ago was that? How long ago was that? Like a month, less than a month. Ago. A month ago. Okay. All right. So just to let you know, I mean, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but there's two point three billion dollars shortfall in New York State. There is no Okay. All right. So um, it looks like right now that these funds will no longer be provided to hospitals or nursing homes. But we use to help support the general fund. And that right. was specific to Medicaid reimbursement, not for this specific program. Correct. Correct. All right. So this isn't the Fidelis uh, two billion dollar. Uh, it money is, but it doesn't have anything to do with well, that's that. That's what it says right here. It says that uh, 2017 Fidelis Care sold all of its assets uh, to yeah. Centene uh, Corporation. Uh, uh, companies have agreed to pay two billion dollars in both direct payments and taxes over the next five years. The exec, uh, executive originally intended on using those funds to address collective bargaining and needs for hospitals and nursing homes. These funds will no longer be provided to hospitals and or nursing homes and will be used to help support the general fund. That is All right, that's scary for me too. That's we can't control 
I know we can. I know we can, but we can't. That specific money. But we can't sit here and wait for it. That specific money was to increase Medicaid reimbursement. That's Medicaid. Not grants. These grants are still in the still in place, as far as everybody knows, as far as what anybody will tell us. So that that in itself is scary enough. A two point three billion dollar shortfall in your state. We can never be assured of anything no, okay. because no one will tell us that. No, okay. So we need to find a way to keep this hospital right. going as best as whatever whatever it turns out to be, however it needs to be. We need to do something here Wait to, to make sure that, that we are still here. I'm telling you, $85 million net Wait. impact, that whenever you whenever you think about that, whenever you reduce right. that, it's going to be general. permanent. I think Carol here read on ahead when she sent us an email listening to the physicians, listening to the board of managers. She hit it right on the head. We've got to get both of them in here. We don't need a public presentation. We need both boards to get them in a room together and ask the hard questions. That you try to try That's what Carol was doing. And I under, I completely understand that and I spoke to Carol and I support Carol. Okay? Thank you. Uh, uh, that's what I think we need to do, and I hope and I encourage both boards to come together. Get both them in room, ask them the hard questions. We're not going to get anywhere if I individually go speak to Mr. Acker or Gordon Crown because I can come back with an answer that you might not like or they might not like. Let's get together, get them in a room together, and I want to hear the questions you ask them, and you should hear the questions I ask them. And then I still believe the people that are removed from this board would make the, just the right decision for the town to see that. And I I support that. Yes. Yeah. We had that He's meeting. expert there. We had, you hit it right on the head. The town board and the hospital board need to come together. Yes. We had that meeting in early January. Okay, I think you were there, Karen. No. You were not there. Okay. But you were there. And there was a, I sensed anyway, the spirit of cooperation that there, instead of, instead of tearing apart, okay, because it's taken a long time to get in this financial situation, okay, but the thing, the thing that, that I, I was encouraged by listening at that meeting, and we agreed to have other meetings on a fairly regular basis. That didn't work out, but it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that it can't work out. Because you refuse to let the CFO and the CEO of the hospital see have it in an email from you. You refuse to let them come to the meeting. And Why? He told me that himself. Why? He yeah. Told me. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. All yeah. I do a meeting if, if the experts. That have knowledge of the subject. Well, I'm not here to cause harm. I'm here to help. Well, then why should we all meet together? Oh, sorry. Else 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 sorry, wrong. It is the hospital board of managers that call a meeting on hospital grounds, all by the bylaws. Every time we reached out to you in a meeting, nobody wanted to do it. It's going to be down here. We always I asked for a round table meeting back on when we first give you two days notice about a meeting on January 2nd the day that we really do. Um I asked for a round table discussion. Okay, we ended up having that in front of our board meeting that Al was talking about in January. Right. He's talking about that. Carol has asked for a round table meeting. It shouldn't be down here, it should be at the hospital. She's trying to get the physicians there, the town board there, and the current board of managers there. And it doesn't seem to work out. Do you want everybody to come down here? It's not round table. It's not round table right now. You're just sitting up there looking down at everybody. Come on. The January 4th, we had a round table set up here. <laughs> that was too inconvenient because it was too close to the holidays, but you're able to make it here on January 2nd, two days before. That's the first time. That is very unfair. I asked for some coordination for some here, and I don't know what we came to that. Then we got a, a note to come to a meeting. Um, a round table, definitely without Pat or Chuck. 
And I sent an email to all of you and everybody on the board of the hospital saying that that's why I would come. You knew it. Um, the doctors have requested what we're all talking about, which is to have some people present. It doesn't yeah. have to take a year to do it. If Mr. Acker doesn't want to come, I'm sure Dr. Moresco would be very happy. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm serious. And, and why can't we have somebody from the other place? Then we can make a decision, right? I mean, no, I, just, I, I agree with you, Lenore. Well, Lenore, I agree with you, and I agree with what everybody's saying here. And I have said this, and I've said this in public. Yeah. And I've said it to certain people that have reached out to me who I have met. And when we met on the 21st, going off what Mr. Nicola said, in that room when the two met, it was agreed upon that these meetings would happen. We understand people can't always come to them. Come to the meeting. As, as the board of managers of the hospital. We may not agree, but we are trying. I was trying. I was. And as far as the media, when we talked in that room on the 21st, I thought I made it said, as myself, speaking as myself, that I would not speak to the media because it gets too much twisted up. That if somebody has something to say to me, come to my face. And I have met with people and discussed it to them through their face. Ask me my questions. I'll, answer, I'll try to answer yours. If I don't, I but I can try. That's all I can do. And yes, I have been on both sides of the board. And let me tell you what, there was a lot, and I've said this in public before, there was a lot of finger pointing. This board, that board. And and, it, and I have said before, if God is God, and we are trying. And here we are again, back in here, and I feel we're back a little bit, taking two steps forward, two steps well, back. We take 10 steps right. forward. You're right. Having that group, yep. having but as far as, 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 far as being on the other side of the day, he had that meeting, he let me go. And I, I, I know. Yeah. Did I agree with all that? I don't know. No. Did you? You don't know. No. No. But people need to ask me. Don't read what you, you see or hear in the paper. But the thing is, they're not going to come individually and ask you. Yeah. That's what the I media have, is for. You and I understand that. Make your but I also voice feel, heard. And I also yeah. understand. And sometimes, and this is just me of who I am. I feel sometimes they take your words. And I think it's happened to many on both sides of the board. And it's twisted a little bit. That's just what my opinion. To him. No you one wants to twist. They just want to hear what you, what you say. And I understand that. But I am the type of person where if you want to know something, come to my face. Okay, but I'm most of us work full And I understand that. And I understand that. And I understand that. We can't. I know. I have one last comment and one last question, then I'll sit down. But somebody wants to ask me a question, which I will always glad to answer. But the reality is, we can't actually create an affiliation, either the town or the hospital, on its own, under the certain circumstances, as basis of law. Jared, is that correct? The hospital board here all my life, but I knew that part away from here. Uh, I really want to retire here, live here. I want to be able to have business here. I want a hospital to care of me because I'm not so dumb. Here, here. So, <laughs> we need to do what we need to do, which is best for my business. And from an affiliation standpoint, I haven't seen reports either exactly who's going to do what for us. So I think what Carol was doing was pulling people together to have this discussion, to have it with these potential, and who knows? I mean, the responsibility in 2017 when the board was established, their responsibility was to take the affiliation and go out and get the best affiliation for the field. That would give it the best as a responsibility. As far as some of the other things Steve said, you haven't said, some of those things were looked at, reviewed, but not finalized because the money isn't there yet. To pay the debt. And that doesn't mean we have been working on it, right? Anybody have anything? Well, that is my point that we had all the time what you were doing to get rid of that debt. And we'll see if it's a grant, 
And I said, what's the plan mean if you don't get the grant? And I got this deer in the headlight plug, and nobody ever came up. I want to go back to some of the recommendations and discussions, and maybe Joe can even respond to that. But at one point in time, the hospital suggested that the new corporation be able to go out and bond it, and the new corporation would pay it back over 20 years so yeah. we could move down this, and that would be too bad. Well, yeah. then, then that, that, that was 16. That was 16. Thank you. I'll put 16 million dollars after that. Am I correct? It was 5.8 million dollars in 2016 of half of that as well. Yeah. We, we got a grant for 5.8 million. We proposed a grant of about 20 million dollars for other projects, but we received the 5.8 million. That paid off the paid off the outstanding debt uh, that was. Don't worry about a good time. Go ahead. Oh, well, sign the transfer. Asset transfer. We can't sign the asset transfer without liability. Mm -hmm. so, Did they give you any money for this? The assets they're asking for have. I mean, well, has, have, have the taxpayer given the hospital any money for those assets they're asking to transfer? No. Never. No. No. Never. No. Never. So Never. Listen, they sign a piece of paper and give them the stuff that they paid for already. <laughs> Are you sure of that? Yes, would I, was how just, much? I was just told that for a hundred and twenty thousand dollar house, the tax increase would be five thousand. You're saying a hundred thousand dollars house would be we'll fifty five hundred? Uh, I find the email here, like it's like all things. That's okay. They'll Either just get way, the house no, back. We're going to be able to afford it. We're all going to leave. 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 we are all going to did you vote? Did you have any say in it? No. Wow. Yeah. You have no vote. All of a sudden, you got $20 million. I'm going to get rid of this lady here. $4,800. Then we bring another lady in. Did you vote? No. Get rid of her? No, I didn't. Did you vote to get rid of her? Did you have any say in it? What do you mean I ain't saying that? You do this. 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 You do Yes. The previous I'm sorry. Keep quiet. All right. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Where we're going to be going, Mark, and of course we go Mark. And you got rid of her before we even had a chance to form this committee. Did you discuss it with your board before you fired her? It has to be done that way. You have no choice. It's a twenty million dollar budget. It's more budget than you may have in your town council, and you don't do it without your council. It has to be. That lady has to be put back on the board. Yeah. Yeah. I want this lady back on. Yep. But you don't even on four days and you kicked her off. For God's sake, I can't fix your truck in four days sometimes. <laughs> they don't break down their settings. <laughs> Please give her a chance. Give her six months. If she doesn't satisfy your need. Then get rid of her and you too. And that's basically why I'm going. Because I'll probably get better than you tomorrow. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes big up. Yeah. 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 Ye
or what little they have worked there, God forbid, we have one that has been working there and knows all the ins and outs and has a medical background with it. We have let go people that have worked on that board that know all our ins and outs, our quality of care, our, our financial stuff. They know all those things. And now you're pointing new people that we're going to have to start all over again. And how are we supposed to do this within a time frame in order to survive? We can't do it. Appoint those people back in with your so-called new buddies you want to have in. Yeah. Put them all together and let's make a, an informed, informed yeah. consent, informed decision. Because that's what healthcare is all about. Informing your patients, letting them know what it's all about so they can make the best decision of where the hell they want to go. Because right now, they ain't going to want to come to Messina because we ain't informing each other. Exactly what you told me. <laughs> That's disgusting. It's not you true. need to step down. Here, here. You are the problem. You don't know health care. You know nothing about health care. He does. Here, here. Anybody else? Not about Good friends. Will you let me go again? <laughs> <laughs> We were doing it when Karen was speaking, and then I said five, and then I said yep. Andy. I and I'm not trying to tell people when no, Andy had his hand up after five, just to keep it. Andy had a question. I have one burning question right now. I have more for later, but the one I want to get right now. Is there anything precluding, and I guess this is a question for Eric, because he's a legal guy here. Is there anything precluding the council to make the motion to pass a local law, hold a public hearing, go through all the process that would require a vote from the board to appoint or remove hospital board members. So are you precluding that passing the local law? Yeah. yeah. So there, there's the process that governs that is the municipal plan. And because of the state statute already, I don't think that the local board can override that state statute. Right? I mean, it's kind of an off the cuff answer, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah. The, the municipal home law allows the local municipalities to do things where the state hasn't already, hasn't already acted or to make um, under certain statutes, the states are giving the local uh, authority. The zoning is the prime example. To set their own uh, standard, but I don't think that this you have to go. Thank you. Steve, can you give Carol six months under your belt to keep her going? We want her back. Please, we want our board members back. We want all of our board members back. So. You and I have known each other for a long time. We work for the Power Authority. I work for the Seaway. We've served on um, committees together post 9 11 to develop security plans for if the tunnel had to be closed and, and other issues we were dealing with at that time. I know this has been difficult for both of us. And this, this is not pleasant. Um, but but in my career, I learned the most from people that didn't agree with me, but from people who disagreed with me. And I've always dealt with those people with, I hope, uh, the respect due them and do their opinion. I've worked with a lot of different people, and I, I think we can work together, Steve. I really, I really want to work with this board 
with the physicians or the people of Messina, because we really do want the same things. So I'm just putting that out there. That, um, I'll carry the olive branch, and if you uh, if you want to work together like we did years ago, I'm open to that. The alternative, Mr. Supervisor, is you let your dumpster fire continue to burn. You make a mockery <coughs> of this. Not just you, Steve. I'm not just calling you. All five of you talk about you for our couple. You have all disappointed every single person in the world in a multitude of ways. So your alternatives are reinstate the people to the hospital board. That your constituency is demanding be put back to board. Reinstate them. Is there anything, Councillor, that, that says that there are a, there, there's a set number of people on the hospital board or can it expand? There's a number of people. Then put it back. Then put, it, put these people back on the board. Yep. They have put in years in most cases. Years. For nothing other than, hey, thank you. I appreciate the job that you do because I know that you're looking out for us. Nothing other than that. <coughs> that is paid by the council. They're not going to cite They probably don't even get a lunch. Okay? Put them back. This, to be quite honest, it's a least <laughs> That's option one. Option two, let your dumpster fire continue to burn. I, I'm sorry, Sam, am I, uh, am I interrupting your phone on time? No. Oh. Oh. That's real, uh, Jeremy David. Says the guy who's looking at the map. I look up for an email. Okay, there we go. I'd like your dumpster story. I'm listening to you. I'm listening about your dumpster story. Yes, go ahead. Bullying. The other four members of the council have been giving me the, the uh, respect of looking at it. Hey, I'm sorry, you got a hot date? You going somewhere? Let me speak. Yeah. Option number one, reinstate the people. Option number two, let the dumpster fire burn. You guys were already a moderate in the press. In the minds of the people, the people that work at that hospital deserve better. The people that voted you into office certainly do. Volunteer fire from your state until there's a whole bunch of volunteers. I can't believe fire that fear, that pillar of society right there because the only thing that woman does is dedicate her whole <coughs> life and her whole life to <coughs> another <coughs> purpose other than herself. And I can't believe anyone would ever fire Sue Beller. She's not a fireable person. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's with Marissa. No. Tell us what qualifications Don Hitler has to be appointed to the hospital. Yeah. Can you tell me what she has done at the hospital and resigned? You can ask Don that. Well, you know the answer to that. I want to know why somebody who's forcibly resigned is now appointed to our board to make decisions for the hospital that she helps mess up to begin with. So true. Yeah, really so true. So true. Because she knows how to say yes. Oh, that might be it. Is that it? Janet. Can we get 
an answer? No. Nope. Do nope. we deserve an answer? Yes. yes. It's, it's a personnel issue. Do okay. you want me to talk about you? We just what? asked what you qualifications were. We're asking about how much. Well, how do you feel about it? I'd like to know. Yeah. You haven't said much tonight. Are you not? Who are you talking to, Kathy? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, <my God. laughs> oh, I feel about yeah. the situation. Yeah. I'm appalled by it. Good for you. Good, Good for you. you. Thank you. I've been on the board for a long, long time. And I've never seen anything like this before. And there's enough blame for me. Everybody in this room, we're forgetting this. Everybody in this room, every I don't care who you are, and I don't care where you come from or what you do. We all have one thing in common. We're trying to save an image. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. That's the thing that we have in common. And if we can use those things to bring us together, bring us together. That's the only way that this problem is going to be solved. Not by one person, not by five persons, by all of the people. Thank you, Mr. McCullough. Thank you. <laughs> I have another question. Sorry. Um, in your resolution that you wrote, or whoever wrote in December yeah. of 2015, and it stated that whoever we affiliate with was supposed to save 345 jobs. Yeah. Now with the expansion of the hospital, Tina, how many employees do we have? We're already so that was in 2015. Is there, there any chance of getting that updated to our current employment status? For FEE. Yeah. We have 370. We're below that already. Yeah. And if they if, if they join hospitals, we already know there's gonna be a loss because there's a duplication of services. Yeah. So you're already talking about that affiliation. Um agree or uh, not you're talking about the proposal that was sent to save 375 FTEs. It'll be a lot less than that because we're already below that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, acrimony, animosity. I think to move forward, a good step would be for you tonight, so that you can go home, peaceful nature, is to publicly now, not do it for later, reappoint Carol, yep. reconsider the other board member of the Here, here. Well, we're your public. Yes, you are. And you've already heard from your board members that they don't agree with what you've done. Yeah. It's only up to you. Yeah. 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 Frank, why? We want be a man. Our goals on be a man and honor. Your honor us. We need our experts back on our board. Who's advising you, Mr. O'Connor? If not for your people, I did this with the airport with you here. You had three presentations. They said go checks. You went to go care. Guess what? The federal government came in and said, guess what? You made the wrong decision. We're calling with jets. So what? It, who is advising you, O'Shaughnessy, if your board yeah, guy who's that consulting source? with them? Who's in your ear? If, if it isn't for us, because this this room is filled with board, the boutique air, and they didn't want you to stop going to Albany, and you did anyway, okay? You made up your mind once already. Now have you made up your mind already? Who is advising you? Yeah. <laughs> You're not listening to your board, obviously, because they're saying they don't agree with you. They don't matter for you. No. Eat your words. Okay. Anything else? No, no, come on. Come on. Let's do it. Right. Right. Let's take a five minute break and uh, carry on. Thank you all for coming. Now we do the whole thing.
Many an afternoon, yeah, Howard. Right. And that's what <laughs> father is <laughs> <laughs> doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are the one person. Good job, Karen. Oh, thanks. I know. I know what you mean. Thank you. You should come up and have coffee in our yard. Okay. Oh, look at that. How are you doing? Well, this uh, ends the uh, Messina Town Board meeting. I want to thank everyone for watching. We currently have 60 watchers right now in this live meeting, and we're heading out now. We will try to someday do uh, these uh, live meetings again with the village and town if we can once I get the better uh, equipment to use, the live stream in high definition. So I want to thank everyone who's uh, tuned in to this first live stream of the Cena Town Board meeting at uh, the Cena Memorial Hospital hearing. It's been quite a show. So folks, the stage play is over.